Hi, welcome to My Quilting Beehive. Today I want to show you how to adjust your border to make up for any imperfections you might have in your Lone Star that you made. And we're going to add borders to it to make it end up being 44 and a half inches wide and 44 and a half inches tall. So the first thing you need to do is measure your center area. Once you have it all together, you're going to measure it. And when you measure it, you want to measure it in three places. So somewhere near the first side and minus 39 inches, and then somewhere near the middle. And remember, fabric has a little stretch, so it's a little bit off. You can, you can kind of make it work, too. So if it's close but not quite, you can see. And I can stretch mine to 39 inches. And then if you reach way up to the other end of the quilt, see if that is also the same. If your numbers are the same and you can get 39 inches all the way across, you can use 39 inches. If yours is 39 and a half or 38 and three quarters, use the measurement that's right to your quilt. I'm also going to measure it the other direction to see if it's square. And you'll do the same thing. You're going to measure this way, across there, across the center, and then across close to the other end. And my measurements, I'm 39 on the sides. My middle is just a little bit short, but I can use an average. And I'm going to say it's close enough to 39 that I'm going to make it work at 39 because it's only off by a little bit in my middle there. Sometimes that happens. We're going to make it work by adding the border, and it'll bring it all to the right size. Now, I want my quilt to be 44 and a half inches. My quilt right now is 39 inches. So you're going to need to do a little bit of math. We're going to take that 44 and a half that we have and subtract the 39, and that gives me five and a half inches. And then I'm going to add my seam allowance because you're going to end up a half an inch over here and a half an inch over here. So you're going to add an inch to that for your seam allowance, which makes it six and a half inches. So I'm going to need to add six and a half inches total to this to make it end up being 44 and a half. So I'll add some of it on one side. Some of it on the other side. So six and a half and six and a half, we're going to divide it in half. And our, my borders are going to end up being three and a quarter. So that means if I add three and a quarter inches here and three and a quarter inches here, it will end up being the size I want it to be to make it 44 and a half. Once you determine your measurements, the first question is, is your quilt square? Did you get the same measurement from the length and the width both ways? Make sure you got the same measurement. If you did not, you're going to have to do the math twice and use two different size borders to make it work. Mine did work out where all of mine were about 39 inches, so I'm going to use 39 inches for all four of my borders. So here I have my quilt pieces. I'm using three and a quarter inches, but use the measurement that you calculate based on your pattern to make it the size you need to fit your, pad your quilt. They're all going to be a little different depending on your seam allowance. Don't feel like you did something wrong. It's okay. Mine are three and a quarter inch strips. I have four of them here because it is a square quilt and mine was 39 inches both directions. To cut your border strip, I recommend using a long tape measure to make sure you're going to be able to cut it all the same. I have all four stacks, so they'll all be cut exactly the same. You're going to grab your ruler and your rotary cutter. And your first cut is just going to be to remove the selvages and square up the end. So I have all four stacked together here, and I'm just going to come around and cut my selvage off. Then I know I need mine to be 39 inches because that's my measurement that I came up with. So my border is going to be 39 inches. Yours might be 38 and three quarters, 39 and a quarter. Use the measurement that you got when you measured your quilt. And there. So I'm always checking to make sure the beginning is exactly right. And I know I need 39 inches. I'm going to slide my ruler under there. And I pick a straight line on my ruler to make sure it's a square cut and not crooked. Line it right up with that 39. And make sure it's, a, I got my four inch line at the top here lined up straight. And there's my 39. Double check your other end. Make sure it's right before you get ready to cut. Measure twice, cut once. You don't want to make a mistake. And then I move 
and it slipped. My ruler slipped when I did that, so I have to have to put it back. Double check, triple check. Always measure, measure, measure. Make sure you get it right. Now I have it at 39. I'll be careful not to hit my ruler this time. Slide my tape measure out of the way. And I'm going to chop that off. There's my extra. Now all my border pieces are the same. Your corner pieces that you're going to use on this, whatever measurement you came up with, so mine were three and a quarter, whatever that measurement is, you're going to make squares of your fabric one that are going to go there. Mine are three and a quarter inch squares, so they're going to go on my corners. Once you have your borders cut to the right width and length, you're going to need to pin them to your quilt. I like to pin one pin on this end and one pin on this end to hold it in place to make sure it goes from end to end. And then make sure it works its way all the way across. Fabric has a little stretch. Use that to your advantage. Get it all laying flat. And then you put pins across. Every six to eight inches or so is good to make sure it holds it. Um, sometimes I like to use more depending on, depending on what I'm pinning it to. But this one I think every six inches will, will work for me. But pin your border so that way when you get to your machine, it's not going to shift when you're sewing it in. You want it nice and secure all the way across. And when I sew this, I'm pinning the, the border on the top here, but when I sew, I am going to flip it over. And I'm going to sew with this side up so I can watch my points where my star meets so I make sure my star points don't shift. There we go. So then I'll bring this to my sewing machine and I'm just going to sew a straight line all the way across. When you're ready to sew, bring it to your machine. And I like to take the bulk of the quilt and bring it up on the table so it's not pulling and not giving you problems keeping it feeding evenly. So I like all the quilt to be up on my table when I can. And I'm going to come over here to my machine. We're going to use a quarter inch seam. Make sure you use your accurate quarter inch so it ends up being the 44 and a half inches that we want it to be. And you're just going to sew along the binding, uh, the border, sorry. Sew all the way along the border. And this point, the seam's going the wrong way for me to see. So if I'm having trouble and I want to be able to see that point, I can actually take a little marking pencil and I can mark where it is. So I can see it and make sure I sew there and don't lose my point. If you have an accurate quarter inch seam, it should be a quarter inch from the edge and that helps you too. As you go, make sure your seams stay flat. And sew right along. Remove the pins when you get close to them. And watch those points when you're sewing to go right where the point meets so you don't cut off your tips of your, top, of your stars. All that work we did, we want to have nice pointy stars. Okay, and you're just going to keep going across the entire length of the border and then repeat it with the second border. After you sew your two sides on, you are going to bring it to your ironing board. I like to lay it with the border piece on top and then we are going to just use our fingers to press it so the seam allowance goes toward the seam. And then use the iron to lay it flat and press it. The side of my iron will help push it right into place and make sure that your points are showing and you don't have any tucks or folds in your iron, in your border. Repeat that with the other side. So before we sew on our second border, I just want to remind you, if your quilt was not square, if your measurements were not the same, you can cut your second strip to a different width to make it equal that 44 and a half inches that we want. So use the calculations in your pattern to determine what size your border needs to be. So if one of them was three and a quarter and the other one is only three, it's okay. You'll just need to make your squares that go on the corners actually make them three by three and a quarter to match the measurements you need. 
And don't feel bad if they didn't line up perfectly. If, if, you're, if your center star isn't exactly a square, it's okay, because we'll fix any, any problems by adjusting the border, and then nobody will ever know but you, and you don't have to tell anybody. So after you set, cut your second border, you're going to add your corners to that one. And then you will just repeat the process to sew your side borders to finish your top and bottom now. Once you get your border sewn on, you can do your little happy dance because the center of our quilt is together. Check it to make sure it's 44 and a half inches because we need it to fit with all our other pieces that we'll be putting on in November. If you are making the Marvelous Mystery Quilt, I can't wait to see pictures of your center on Facebook in our private group. If you're not making the Marvelous Mystery and you're interested, I do have a Lone Star pattern in my Etsy shop and I'll put a link to that below and you can make your own Lone Star block. Um, it's a plain one without the stars in the corner, but it's a, a lovely pattern and I hope you enjoy it. Thanks.